Warning, your feet are in danger. If you stumbled upon this video, there's a strong chance that you're subscribed to our channel. If that's not the case yet, maybe you should consider it right now, my friend. If you're subscribed, it means you're interested in sneakers. And if you're interested in sneakers, it means you wear sneakers. And that might be the problem. Sneakers are clearly not just a thing for enthusiasts or young people. Literally everyone wears them. And the initial reason for the success of sneakers was mainly their comfort, far superior to the formal shoes that everyone used to wear back in the day. For a long time, sneakers were seen as the holy grail of comfort. But this view no longer holds unanimous consent today. According to some experts, or pseudo-experts, sneakers nowadays are a real danger to our feet, and we should try to wear them as little as possible. Whether it's running shoes that are supposed to be ultra comfortable, or worse, the Dunk or Jordan 1s, slightly less comfortable, all these pairs have supposedly been standardized and manufactured in a way that prioritizes production efficiency for factories and improves the profitability of brands at the expense of our foot health. But it could also have an impact on our ankle knees, and backs. In short, sneakers might be much more problematic than we think, regardless of the brand. New Balance enthusiasts, please calm down. Calm down! You calm the f down! So, what are people worried about? What's the problem? Is wearing sneakers a serious threat to our health? Are there more suitable alternatives for our bodies than the pairs you find at most retailers? Or could this whole story be nothing but a stupid conspiracy theory pushed by a sect of barefoot-loving hippies? We'll find out in this video. Today we're gonna talk about feet. New video! You know we talk about sneakers here, but we've never really questioned whether sneakers are actually good for us in terms of health or the complete opposite. Let's not lie, for the younger ones watching this video, what motivates us to make our choices in terms of sneakers is clearly more about hype than health or even comfort. We've seen it with the huge popularity of Dunks or Jordan 1s, which are, and bear with me here, quite far from being the most recommended pair by orthopedists. And yet you bleed for those pairs, but you still complain about the comfort. So. To understand why we subject ourselves to this, we asked you about the comfort of your pairs on Insta. We realized that comfort is a priority for only 30% of y'all. The rest are not willing to compromise at all and are not ready to sacrifice their style to gain comfort and preserve their health. So we also asked if you were really comfortable in most of your sneakers and we found similar numbers. Only slightly less than 30% of you are fully satisfied with the comfort of your pairs. Probably those who are willing to sacrifice style for comfort and the rest, well, they're probably people who daily plastic cast dunks that give you blisters. This observation is quite alarming to be honest. We've been getting sold sneakers for a century and we still don't even feel comfortable in them. And maybe even worse, our pairs could be downright harmful to us. So to understand the why and how, as usual, we'll have to provide some historical context. Comfort in our shoes is actually a relatively recent concept from a historical perspective, and it seems like it's a subject that nobody really gave a damn about throughout history. For thousands of years, we've been wearing what we could more or less call shoes, and it was going pretty well at first, there were ingenious methods to improve the comfort of our pairs. Obviously, it wasn't ultra boost, but it was ingenious for the time. They would stuff hay or grass into a piece of leather, and it worked. At that time, shoes were purely utilitarian, neither design objects, fashion items, nor industrial products. What we'll quickly understand is the importance of having something to protect the arch of the foot from ground impacts, and to protect the rest of the foot from cold or other weather conditions, but it stopped there. As time went on, shoe design naturally evolved, but we didn't necessarily get more more comfortable designs, on the contrary. We even had some peculiar customs like the lotus feet in China, where young girls' feet were bound to deform and make them fit into those mini shoes. It's similar to the villain from the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Anyway, back to the point. Even back then, when people wanted to stand out with their shoes, comfort was often neglected, and the common folks just settled for whatever they could find. They didn't have much say in the matter, while nobles wore extravagant shoes to differentiate themselves. The comfort of our shoes wasn't even a topic worth discussing. It took until the mid-19th century for us to finally have left and right shoes. No joke. Before the arrival of Alexi Godiot, a French leather artisan, there were no left or right shoes. It was literally just two identical shoes. He invented the concept initially for the military, after realizing that the left foot didn't necessarily resemble the right foot. This revolution later spread worldwide, and today it seems absolutely crazy that nobody had thoughts of it before him. 
That's crazy. I know, that's crazy. Around the same time, the discovery of vulcanization led to the creation of the first rubber soles. And you know the rest of the story. Well, if you don't, you can just subscribe to our channel because you'll get all the info you could ever ask for over here. We owe a great deal of the comfort in our shoes to running, especially to New Balance, who took the importance of comfort in runners' shoes very seriously from the get-go. They introduced innovations to improve arch support and adapt the shoe size for wider feet. Then came Nike, propelling the joy of Sunday jogging, capitalizing on that enthusiasm, which pushed almost all other brands to develop new technologies focused on the comfort of runners and, of course, all other athletes. Everything was going great in the best of worlds. Sneakers completely overshadowed formal shoes, which used to be the norm back then, and sneakers had absolutely zero haters until the early 2000s, when studies and books began questioning the impact of shoes on our health, or rather, whether we would be better off without shoes. One notable example is the book Born to Run by Christopher McDougall, which talked about a mysterious tribe deep in South America with innate running abilities that were downright incredible, and they ran barefoot, unlike us rocking $200 runners. From that point on, many people started looking into the negative effects of sneakers, and the causes were in unexpected places. When we asked you to define comfort in a sneaker, the majority of you only mentioned soles, and it's true that when you put on a pair of shoes, it's the first thing you feel. But according to several studies, it's precisely these cushioned soles that could have a negative impact on our long-term health. By constantly wearing these heavily padded soles that we have today, our historical way of walking, developed over centuries, has been completely disrupted. People increasingly tend to strike the ground with their heels first, while making less flexible ankle and toe movements as they are immobilized and facilitated by the shoes. Surprisingly, a 2007 study found that running barefoot reduces knee impact by 12%, simply because our movements are different when we're barefoot. You see, our shoes were designed to do the work for us, and seemingly trivial things like the toe spring, that slight 15 degree elevation found in all your pairs, are details designed to normalize and facilitate our walking and running. However, over time, this greatly diminishes the balance and strength of our feet, particularly our toes, which have become almost atrophied. You can try moving your toes in all directions at home, and you'll see that, except for your big toe, mobility is quite limited. Ah, my foot fell asleep. The damage caused by the standardization of our shoes doesn't stop there. We don't all have the same feet in terms of shape, width, length, orientation, arch shape, and so on. Yet apart from the shoe size, our shoes don't adapt to our feet. It's actually the opposite. Our feet have had to adapt to our shoes. This is one of the points emphasized by activists of the anti-sneaker crowd. Most shoes don't align with the natural movements of the foot and compress our feet, leading to muscle atrophy, deformations, and potentially detrimental side effects on the entire body body, posture, and long-term mobility. When you consider how bandages can deform feet, it's not far-fetched to think that our shoes can also deform our feet, given it's on a smaller scale. But ideally, this shouldn't be the case at all. What's totally gonna throw you off is that once you're in a pair of shoes, you don't realize the damage they could be causing you. That's why we've seen the emergence of the barefoot movement, which at its core simply means going shoeless. However, since it's not necessarily practical to walk around barefoot in everyday life, we've witnessed the rise of a whole new type of shoe. Barefoot shoes. Well, the name in itself is a huge oxymoron, but the idea is to create shoes that give us the sensation of being barefoot. Of course, we have the toe shoes that you're all familiar with, but there's a lesser known type of shoe that resembles bubbles. The concept is to allow your toes to have a full range of motion inside the shoe, unlike regular sneakers, and to have completely flat soles to maintain a natural walking motion. These changes may seem quite simple, but according to some barefoot enthusiasts, it has literally changed their lives by eliminating ankle, knee, and and even back injuries that they had been dealing with for years. It sounds dreamy, but if we delve deeper, there's not much concrete evidence. The benefits are sometimes more psychological than anything else, and the drawbacks of modern shoes are actually hardly noticeable for most people. So, we're somewhat in the realm of belief, sometimes it just seems like a sectarian delusion. Moreover, most people who promote the barefoot movement have something to sell you. It feels like somebody want to sell me something! In reality, there is currently no conclusive evidence that this weird type of shoe has remarkably positive impacts on our bodies. The brand Vibram, for example, had to pay nearly $4 million in fines for claiming that their barefoot shoes were good for health without being able to prove it. So don't worry, apparently wearing clown shoes is not the solution either. However, what's for sure is that the sneakers we're rocking right now, well, they can have a negative impact on our feet if we're not careful about what we wear and how we wear them. It's not for nothing that nearly 60% of you are 
not fully satisfied with the comfort of your pairs. Beyond the technology of your soles, you also need to make sure you choose the right size. And it's not as straightforward as you might think. If necessary, consider seeing a podiatrist to ensure that the insole is suitable for the arch of your feet or that the width matches the shape of your feet. Change out the pairs you wear to allow the foam to regenerate. Opt for pairs with less pronounced toe springs and simply give your feet some space. Stop constantly jailing them in sneakers because your feet have muscles too. And it's important to get them going. So do some more research on the health of your feet, especially if you have flat feet or other similar stuff. Flexing with the latest pair of Travis Scott is all well and good, but having healthy feet is still better, don't you think? Like she went to college Like I got some concrete in my veins Bitch, you know I'm solid Pretty nigga, get my hands dirty Then I get them polished I don't like to pop out Don't do functions I hate when she crowded I don't chit chat About this and that That shit lame as hell Brand new bitches They play their position And they do it well I'm nonchalant But if you 